If you need a website, domain, or online store, then why not make it with today's sponsor, Squarespace. Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well, and thank you for joining us for another video. It's been a few months since I began publishing videos tackling the flat earth idea, and the very first one that I did ran with the very simple concept that even on a flat earth, the horizon can't possibly appear perfectly straight as flat earth is claimed. Because even a flat disc, when viewed from any elevation, will show a curved horizon in order to circle around you. Unsurprisingly, that video received much criticism from flat earthers for various reasons, trying to debunk my argument. So in this video, we're going to address them. The most common argument I actually received was against an image I'd shown which depicted the flat earth as a flat disc floating in space and many flat earthers argued they don't believe the earth is a disc floating in space. Although there is seemingly no agreed upon concept as to what it actually is. Many have claimed that the earth is surrounded by an infinite ice wall rather than just being a, a floating disc. Although I'm not entirely sure how that combats my argument about the horizon. Because even if the earth were surrounded by an infinite ice wall, presumably the land and the sea would still be circular and so would still appear to curve unless we could actually see the infinite ice wall, which we can't even from very high altitude. Now this leads us on to the second argument that people put to me, which is that the reason we can't see the infinite ice wall is because our vision is limited and we can't see that far to see the edge. Now this flat earth claim that our vision has a limited range is something that I'm going to address in a future video. However, even if there were a limit to our vision, that still doesn't address the argument of seeing a curve, because our vision range would stretch equal distance in all directions, which would still form a circle around us. If you're in a balloon and our vision range is 10 miles, it will be 10 miles in a full 360 degrees, which would still create a curved horizon line. The only way that the horizon would appear to stay perfectly flat, even from very high altitude, is if the Earth were a shape that had a completely straight edge that we could actually see the edge of. Except, say, an infinitely long rectangle, for example, would only work if we were looking perpendicular to the long edge. The moment you turn 90 degrees, the Earth would then appear to get gradually smaller and smaller into the distance like a set of rail tracks. If the Earth was square, then you'd see flat horizons in four perpendicular directions, but the views in between them would come to a point. And again, if it were a limit to our vision that stopped us from seeing that point, then it would still appear to be curved. Now, since we're on the topic of square Earths, it seems like an appropriate time to tell you about square space. And no, I'm not saying that space is square. I'm talking about one of the most popular website building and hosting platforms around that make creating your websites so easy. I've tried making my own business websites in the past with other platforms and it was an absolute headache. Either the features that you could put on the site were very limited or they were just so complicated to try and incorporate and I struggled to make the websites look professional. But I've had none of that using Squarespace. There are loads of templates to choose from, which you can then extensively customize so that you don't end up with a website that looks identical to everyone else's. And there are a whole host of tools that you can incorporate into your website, such as subscriber email campaigns, online stores, appointment bookings, and so much more, and all very easy to set up. So even if you're not particularly tech savvy, you can get a professional looking website to help drive your business forward. You can sign up today for a free trial to find out just how easy it is to use. And if you go via my link in the description and use the code Dave McKeegan, you'll get 10% off your first website or domain. At one point in the video, I showed this image as a demonstration to show that the horizon does actually curve, but that it's only very slight due to the huge size of the globe but we can actually measure the existence of left to right curvature. And if you compress the image down side to side, the curve becomes very apparent. Now, to be clear, this is not my image. This actually comes from MC Toon's website, who I believe got it from another YouTube channel that actually did the demonstration, although that channel no longer exists. 
However, what the image shows is two pairs of perfectly straight metal bars running parallel to each other with the horizon running between them. And we can see that the horizon doesn't stay parallel to the bars. It seems to follow it fairly close from the right side through the center, but by the left side, it's dropped below. And I've had a few different arguments put forward to try and debunk this image. Some just outright claiming that the image has been manipulated to bend the horizon, whilst somehow managing to keep the bars perfectly straight. Some have tried to put it down to lens distortion, causing the horizon to appear curved, except lens distortion would distort everything. It's not going to be picky and decide that it's only going to distort the horizon, but not the bars that are right next to it. And when a lens does show distortion, the center lines always render perfectly straight, and the distortion becomes stronger and stronger the more you move away from it. And in this image, the horizon is straight through the middle of the image, with the bars either side of it above and below. So if it was lens distortion, then it would be distorting the bars, not the horizon. There was a, even a response video done by Post Galactic, who tried to argue that it was all due to perspective. This test is nonsensical out the gate, okay? I, uh, I, I, again, you're depending on just observation. You're also depending on precision and accuracy of setup. Even meticulously going over the image in Photoshop. I'm representing this gap here, which is half of the overall distance. So now this marker block can be moved. So let's shrink the image down a little again. And first we're testing the, the right-hand side of the of the test. I would say that's pretty good, wouldn't you? I think it does. I think it's quite well set up on the right hand side. So let's take the bar over to the other side of the uh, image. Under the bar. And already this is into the ocean a little bit more than I would like to see, but it's okay. It's not bad. And I'm under the bar. So it's still, I would still say this is still okay. Except all they managed to show was that the two bars are in fact straight lines that remain parallel to each other and that the horizon doesn't stay parallel to the bars. You can see a lot more sky on the far left than ocean. Do you see that? But I would not call these three parallel lines, would you? Not a chance. They're different. And, uh, you know, to say that's the ocean curving, that's just a very quick rush to judgment, in my opinion. That is not accurate at all. It's not sitting on the water in the same way. The problem with the argument of perspective is if it were due to perspective, it would be because the camera wasn't shooting square to the bars. So the bars on one side would be further away from the camera than the other side of the bars. But this would mean that the bars would then appear smaller on the side furthest away, and the gap between the bars would appear to shrink. The fact that this gap remains the same between the bars all the way across, as even confirmed by Post Galactic, shows that the camera was actually square to the bars, and so there can't be any perspective shift. And some people even argued that the table in the image isn't straight, so that somehow voids the results. Except it doesn't matter what shape the table is, it's the bars that are being used as the reference, and those are straight. The table is only there to elevate the bars so that they can be seen to align with the horizon. And let's face it, even if the bars weren't there, it's not going to change what shape the horizon appears. You can do it with any wide-angle photo of the horizon at sea. I mean, here are two photos that I took a few years ago on a cruise. They were shot with a 16mm lens on a full-frame camera, so they produce a very wide field of view. And there are straight lines of the ship running up the edges of the frame, which proves it's not a fisheye lens and proves there's no severe distortion, because otherwise these lines would appear distorted. And once again, when we compress the image side to side, there is clear curvature along the horizon. And in case anyone's thinking that compressing the image down side to side is somehow causing the curve, we can draw a straight line from one side of the horizon to the other on the original image, and if the horizon was straight, it would stay along the line we've just drawn. But it doesn't. The horizon sits above the line in the middle of the image. And if we compress that down, the horizon still curves, but the straight line remains straight. 
Regardless of globe or flat Earth, the horizon runs 360 degrees around us, which is impossible to do with a straight line unless you are at exactly zero elevation. The moment you go above that, the only way that you can have a horizon that goes around you is with a curved line. So even if the Earth is flat, the horizon has to be curving. If you're not seeing any clearly defined curvature with the naked eye without using a reference, then it simply means that you're not viewing a wide enough view of the horizon, and you either need a wider view, like using a wide-angle lensed camera, or you increase your elevation further. But the horizon has to curve in order to get around you and back to the other side of your vision. Left to right curvature doesn't prove or disprove either globe or flat Earth, because both of them have to have it. Front to back curvature is what separates the models apart. But that's a topic for another day. I think that's going to conclude this video. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.